In this video, we are going to go over something known as Avogadro's Law. So what do you think is the main idea behind Avogadro's Law as it relates to gas laws? Avogadro's Law describes the relationship between moles and volume. So what's going to happen to a balloon, the volume of a balloon, if you blow in more moles of gas or air into the balloon. As you increase the number of moles of air in a balloon, the balloon will expand. So as you increase the number of moles represented by the letter N, the volume will increase. The more air that you blow inside the balloon, the bigger it will become. And moles is basically quantity. Think of a dozen. A dozen represents 12. So a mole is 6 times 10 to the 23. It's a very large number. Now let's say if you have a balloon that contains one mole of air. It's going to have a volume of 22.4 liters. Now let's say if you have two moles of gas, the volume is going to increase to 44.8 liters. So as you increase the number of moles of gas, the volume will increase. So the equation that you need to know that goes with Avogadro's law is this equation. V1 over N1 is equal to V2 over N2. So that's the formula that you're going to use when solving gas law problems that deal with moles and volume. Now V1 and V2 they can be in milliliters or liters, but they simply have to match. So if V1 is in milliliters, then V2 should be in milliliters as well. Now the graph that goes with Avogadro's law, if you plot N on the x-axis, V on the y-axis, it's a direct relationship, so it's just a straight line. Now let's work out a few problems. If 2.4 moles of gas occupies a volume of 60 liters at a certain temperature, what volume will 3.7 moles of gas occupy? So let's write down what we know. N1 is 2.4 moles. And the volume that corresponds to that, which is V1, that's 60 liters. N2 is 3.7 moles. Our goal is to calculate V2. So let's use the formula V1 over N1 is equal to V2 divided by N2. So V1 is 60, N1 is 2.4. V2 is, we're looking for that, and N2 is 3.7 moles. So what we need to do is we need to cross multiply. So let's multiply 60 by 3.7. So that's going to be 222 and that's equal to 2.4 times V2. So now we got to divide both sides by 2.4. So V2 is 222 divided by 2.4 and so that's going to be 92.5 liters. And so that's the answer. So notice that we increase the moles from 2.4 to 3.7. And the volume increases from 60 to 92.5. Now let's move on to number two. A 250 milliliter balloon contains 0.35 moles of N2 gas. If 0.45 moles of N2 gas was added to it, what will be the new volume of the balloon? Uh, now, like before, let's uh, write down what we know. Okay, let's just rewrite that. N1 is going to be 0.35 moles. And V1 is 250 milliliters. Now, what's N2 and what's V2? Our goal is to calculate the new volume of the balloon. So we need to find the value of V2. Now, since V1 is in milliliters, V2 is going to be in milliliters as well. 
Now what's n2 in this problem? n2 is not 0.45 moles. If you put that there, you will not get the right answer. Notice that 0.45 moles was added to it. So we need to take 0.35 and add 0.45 to it, which will give us 0.8. So that's going to be N2. It's 0.80 moles. So now we can use this formula. And let's plug in what we have. So V1 is 250, N1 is 0.35. Let's calculate V2 and N2 is 0.80 moles. So let's cross multiply. 250 times 0.80 is 200. And the units that we have is milliliters times moles. And that's equal to 0.35 moles times V2. So now let's divide both sides by 0.35 moles. On the right, we could cancel those two values. On the left, the unit moles will cancel. So therefore, V2 is going to be in milliliters. So now let's take 200 and let's divide it by 0.35. So V2 is equal to 571.4 milliliters. Now, does this answer make sense? Well, if we increase the number of moles from 0.35 to 0.8, then it makes sense that the volume should increase from 250 to 571.4. And that makes sense. As you increase the number of moles, the volume should increase proportionally. So if you double the number of moles, the volume should double. If you triple the number of moles, the volume should triple as well. It's a direct linear relationship. They're directly proportional. Number three. An 85 liter flexible container holds 3.4 moles of gas. How many moles of gas should be removed to decrease the volume of the container to 40 liters? Now let's write out what we know. Every time that keeps happening. N1 is 3.4 moles. And V1 is 85 liters. Now we need to find N2 in order to answer the question and we're given V2 this time. V2 is 40 liters. So let's work out this problem using the same formula just as uh, we've used before. So V1 is uh, 85. N1 is 3.4. V2 is 40. And our goal is to calculate N2. So let's start by multiplying 40 by 3.4. And so that's 136 liters times moles. And that's equal to 85 liters times N2. So now let's divide both sides by 85 liters. So N2 is going to be 136 divided by 85, and that's about 1.6 moles. As we can see, the unit liters cancel, and we're left with moles. So is this the final answer? Is N2, well, N2 is 1.6 moles, but does that answer the question? The question asked, how many moles of gas should be removed to decrease the volume? So we started with 3.4 moles and we ended with 1.6 moles. So how many moles of gas was removed to go from a starting value of 3.4 to a final value of 1.6? So what we need to do in this problem 
is we need to calculate the change in the moles. So that's the final amount minus the initial amount. The final amount was 1.6. The initial amount was 3.4. So 1.6 minus 3.4 will give us a negative change value. So it's negative 1.8 because we decrease the number of moles. That's why it's negative. So 1.8 moles of gas was removed from the container. And that's the answer. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.